Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a new edition of my Book It podcast. My name is Rob Howden. Most of you know that me as the uh, the Road to Indie Insider or the both voice of the Road to Indie and the series development director. But I also do a lot of other things as well, including, of course, being the editor in chief and publisher of eCardingNews.com. I've been in the sport for about twenty seven years now. I think twenty eight years going on. I started as a, as a journalist uh, in Canada in nineteen ninety three, so it's been a while. Uh, this particular show, those of you who may follow some of my Road to Indie Insider stuff. This is my book at podcast, and I use it to try to talk to some young drivers that or people, per personalities within the sport as well, who are not into the Road to Indy program. Maybe not yet. Maybe they will be down the line. Maybe they won't. But it's an opportunity for me to reach out. And, and one of the things I'm doing this year is, is trying to get a chance to get some exposure for some of the younger Americans and Canadians from North America who are not racing here at home, maybe racing overseas. Uh, we've had a chance to talk to Max Esterson, one of the drivers in the British Formula Ford program. That's kind of my focus right now. I have a lot of drivers I want to talk to. Now, it's been tough this season. We're already, what, July the 28th right now, Wednesday. Season's kind of rolling through. I was on the road for three months, so not getting as many shows as I wanted. Uh, but there are some number of drivers I'm hoping to get before the end of the year. And, of course, we'll do it in the off season as well. Today's guest is actually a really intriguing guest for me as being a Canadian. Uh, it's Megan Gilks, a young racer who uh, two years ago ran in the W Series, this year running in the Avon Tires Formula Ford National Championship in the UK with Kevin Mills Racing. Uh, a very talented young driver and a really interesting story how she kind of came through uh, the uh, her ladder so far. 20 years of age, coming through karting. We'll talk about it, though, F1200, the Formula V program in Canada. Right from there... Um, put her name in the hat for the W series and was selected to be able to run the W series, a big jump for her into the, into the essentially F3 machinery. So uh, kind of resetting the, the program coming back in, in British formula Ford this year. Let's bring her in here right now, because this is going to be a fantastic interview joining me from uh, in the UK right now, Megan, thanks for coming on the show. Well, thank you so much for having me really looking forward to talking. Uh, lots of for us to talk about because, you know, i been involved in a lot of stuff that you've been involved in, of course, you know, the uh, the Formula 1200 program back in Canada, of course, the Ontario Formula 1600 program that you ran last year during the COVID program and set a new track record there for drivers running that Piper chassis with Brian Graham Racing. Good, good pace there and and uh, just a good season all around. Let's get started right now. Let's, let's talk first. We'll go into your past later, but let's talk about what you're doing right now. Running with Kevin Mills Racing in the Avon Tires Formula Ford National Championship. There's probably not a tougher Formula Ford series in the world, <laughs> to be honest, uh, than British Formula Ford because uh, obviously the conditions so changing. A lot of times it's in the wet. Good competition in Canada, but I have to believe that you're racing against some pretty solid competition this year. Oh, it's fantastic racing over here. You hear about how racing in Europe is sort of where where people aim aim to go for, and it's really living up to the expectations there. The quality of racing is fantastic. The cars are great fun to drive. The Avon tires, they're treaded, and obviously with it being a Formula Ford, there's no downforce as well. So the cars are really moving around, teaching you car control, and the weather as well just throws a spanner in the works, doesn't it? It's, <laughs> it does, uh, 100%, yeah. Wet I, I, to I, dry I, to wet. Yeah, and talking to Max Esterton and and, and, and uh, obviously uh, uh, Jackson Lee last year as well, of course, he was part of Team USA. He'd never driven in the wet before. And do you find that to be something – is that one of the things you're really up against right now is the, is the drivers who have been running that series for so many years know the racetrack so well, right? Plus they know the conditions. Is that? It seems to me like every time you go somewhere, maybe you've never driven that track in the wet before – a good chance of yeah there's um i mean the drivers here they they know their cars they know the tracks and yeah you, you've got a different rain line compared to the dry line everywhere you go so for me pretty much every round has been um has been a learning experience in terms of getting to grips with yet another new track you know going to to places like uh knock hill that was um that was quite a uh an interesting one never having been there before big uh, big step big learning experience um yeah but i'm i'm really enjoying it and the the quality as we said before is really top notch fantastic teams there as well of, of course uh you're running with kevin mills racing what can you tell me about that operation tell me about your teammates a little bit and how things have gone so far to start the season it's a great team to run with, um, great mechanics, a good driver coach as well. Kevin knows those cars inside and out. So you always know you're going into a race with really top line equipment. 
which is a really comforting thing to know as a driver because then it, it's all on you trying to get the best out of what you've got. Um, yeah, so great team. My teammates are also really good drivers as well. We've got Alex Walker, who's, uh, I think at the moment he's third in the championship, but he's won yeah. a few rounds. Um, I've had some good battles with my teammate, Lucas Romanek as well. We've, uh, we always seem to find each other out. You on do. Track, I've watched a couple of so. races. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've had, we've had some good fun battling back and forth. Um, yeah. It's a great team environment as well. Overall, really enjoying it. Uh, let's so let's let's pause there. We'll come back talk more about that. Let's let's go back and to the to the start here. Uh, where did where did racing come into your life? I know that uh, in reading up on you a little bit, a third generation racer. Your grandfather drove. Your, I know that your dad raced as well in F two thousand. I've seen him run before. Where did it all start for Megan? Um, so I did grow up around racing with um, you know my grandfather having been involved in it, and my dad was racing as I was growing up. He did. Uh, Formula 1200 in Canada and also F2000 a bit. Um, but really for me, it was actually the first time that I drove that I really got hooked. I used to live in Barbados and a friend of my dad, um, he had a son whose name is Zane Maloney. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's now Zane racing. I know very well, yeah. Yep. Yes, yeah. He's now racing in uh, the Formula Regional Championship in Europe. And I actually got the opportunity to drive his car in down in Barbados and I loved it and from then on it was just you know let me go out again let me drive <laughs> some more let that's me go it. faster give me a faster cut um and yeah so that's that's really where it started for me so then you came into back to Canada I'm not sure if your family was actually from Canada beforehand but your home country is Canada uh so you go from carts there I think you did some karting there you ran you ran in the Eastern Canadian Karting Championship you ran up uh, in your hometown did a lot of four cycle racing you go from karting into F1200. Now, for those of you who don't know what F1200 is, it's Formula V. Of course, it's been around for many, many years. The F1200 program has been strong in Ontario for, for many, many years. Some great people. That program kind of uh, connected with a guy named Bill Vallis from Vallis Motorsports, who's been around the sport for many, many years. You race for Bill as well. So tell me about the transition. You go from karts, of course, open wheel, open cockpit. You jump into cars for the first time. What was, what was that transition like? So actually the transition from four stroke karting to Formula V was a pretty natural one for me because both of those series require you to keep your momentum going. You can't scrub yeah. speed, you can't you can't make too many mistakes and get away with it in both of those. Another key thing was drafting. In four stroke karting, a, a slipstream is everything. And <laughs> yeah. uh, something that I definitely found in Formula V as well was uh, that slipstreaming was very important. And it was difficult to break away from people when you were at the front of a pack. You could run with the pack, but you just couldn't quite get that edge to uh, to get away because, you know, big front beam that a Formula V has is uh, a slipstream is really powerful. So. Yeah, it was definitely a smooth transition going from, from something low-powered in cuts to something relatively low-powered in cars. And I, and I like the fact that the Formula 1200 or Formula V program, in, in, especially in Ontario, is kind of based at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park or Mosport, as, I, as many people know from, from days gone by. That's a racetrack that I think plays really well. To, to Formula 1200, you talked about the draft there because really it's a strategy call. All race long, you're racing with the guys. It's that big run up the straightaway in the last lap. You have to make sure you make the right move coming out of, to, out of 5A and 5B. Um, did you find that you learned a lot about strategy in your first in your years in, in F1200? Absolutely, yeah. Like you said, you know, it's all about that run down to turn eight where you're yeah. you're trying to find a way by, but then you could be in a group of five or six cars. And um, so it's not just, you know, trying to get ahead of the guy that's in front of you. It's also trying to keep the ones behind you, behind that's you as it. well. That's it. That's right. And that's something so, that really helped me in Formula Ford as well to okay. uh, have had that experience in, um, in drafting and that sort of strategy. Exactly. So here's the interesting thing. This is why I find your whole career so interesting. You know, you watch, we all watch, I think, as the W Series developed, right? We, we saw the ladies that 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 got to, selected to come initially uh, to essentially the, the shootout, the runoffs there. And you saw di different girls of different experience, what ages, whatever it may be. Um, and obviously, you know, when it came out, when it was announced, people putting in their applications. I think your brother was one of the ones that kind of got you to, to, to do that, put your application in. You jump from F1200 
into what is essentially, you know, that the regional spec F3 car, that's a huge jump. You're not coming from F2000 or something else. Uh, what, what were the, what was the shootout like? Well, obviously you get invited to the shootout. You did extremely well. You got to be able to go straight through what, just tell me a little bit about that initial experience going from a 1200 car to an F3 car. What did you, what did you try to drive in between before you went over there? Did you drive an F2000 car before you went over? Yeah, I actually did a little bit of testing in the F2000 that my dad used to race. Um, so I did some testing at, uh, Canadian Tire Motor Sport Park in that. I actually set a time that was only a couple of tenths of a second off the lap record there. So, oh, really? Yeah, no, I was really getting used to the uh, the downforce and the slicks as mm -hmm. well. Um, and then I actually did a couple of test days with the Hill Speed Formula 3 team in a British F3 okay. prior to doing the selection event at um, in Almeria in Spain, where we drove the W Series F3 cars. So that was another big help for me because had I not driven that, I would have been going into it not knowing what it's like to drive an F3, albeit they're different types of uh, of chassis, you know, different levels of aerodynamics, bit different horsepower, um, but an F3 car is an F3 car. So it was, it was really important for me to be able to learn um, through a bit of testing. Let's talk about the W Series in 2019. Obviously, you get thrown uh, into the wolves, essentially, because you're coming at F1200 F6, F1, into this... Uh, program that had so much spotlight, right? Live TV, a ton of coverage in terms of media wise, and you're running racetracks you've never been on before. Overall, when you look back, uh, what are your thoughts on, on the overall program how, and maybe your performances? How do you how do you feel about how you how you performed at that level? So something that a lot of people don't know is that I actually fell ill during the season. I got some food poisoning at the selection event and uh, that, never yeah. actually recovered. Um, throughout the season. So I was constantly battling strength issues, a lack of strength to be able to drive those very heavy Tata chassis. Wow. Um, and yeah, I mean, I've made a, a good recovery now and I'm, you know, it, it's shown in my my driving performance, but yeah, having to, uh, having to try and fight through that was very challenging for me. And I bet a lot of people from the W series were probably thinking, what is wrong with this girl? She goes from really quick some days to really slow other days. Why is she so up and down? And I did have a pretty up and down season, but okay. you know, there's some, um, there's some of the reason why and part of the rest of the reason why I didn't quite perform to the level that I wanted to all of the time was I think just a lack of experience. When you're racing against girls like Jamie Chadwick, Alice Powell, who've done F3 in similar series, you know, for as long as I've been alive, pretty <laughs> much, it, it felt, it sure felt like that. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I've, uh, you know, I've sort of looked back on it and thought what an amazing experience that was to have been able to race on the world stage in a Formula 3 car, something that I couldn't have done without the W Series being Indeed. there. And it, it raised my platform as a driver as well. You know, people have now started to hear about me and it's it's helped my overall racing career. That's it. I like that. Now, you talked about some of the lows. Obviously, you I, I knew that you had been battling a little bit. I didn't know how what the extent was. And of course, I understand completely uh, the energy levels, the strength levels of having battled that, that sal salmonella poisoning. But there's a you had a, a huge positive, a big high as well. In the reverse good race at Assen, you end up uh, getting the race win, able to hold everybody off. You ran super strong. What was that like? This, like Obviously, you had some lows, but to have a high like that, that must have been a fantastic day. Best day of my racing career so far. Hopefully, I'll have more of those to come in the future. But Agreed. yeah, to, to lead off the line from... Uh, from pole position and then hold everyone off and i mean i had a lot of people to hold off i had two safety cars i i'd pull a bit of a gap throughout the uh throughout the race and then just as i'd get you know one two second lead over the next car the safety car would come out again <laughs> and i was you know i was having to in the end just for the last couple of laps defend like my life depended on it yeah, and uh it. seeing alice powell in my mirrors well i had to bring out some of that formula v and four stroke strategy <laughs> that we were talking about to try and keep her back yes but, yeah it, it definitely worked out and uh it was also pretty exciting for it to be you know a win by three thousandths of a second it doesn't get much closer than that 
what I like was that you were able to kind of spin off of that. You know, you, you had the, the passion for, for, for racing. And we'll talk more about the fact that you're in school and, and in an engineering degree. And, you, and your focus is if you can't race potentially on becoming an engineer in Formula One. We'll talk about that uh, later in the show. But you know what? This is a this is only a stepping stone to part of your career, right? You, you, you end up not being not being able to come back for 2021. WC is, of course, going on, on hiatus last year because of COVID. You don't get brought back with the, I think it was the top 12 in points came back, uh, plus new recruits for the, for the new year. So you press the reset button. You come back to Canada, and you get a chance to run at uh, Canadian Tire Motorsports Park again. You move to the Ontario uh, F1600 Championship, which is a tremendous series. Uh, talk a little bit about that. In your in your mind, did, did you feel like there was a that you were taking a step down, or was it just more pressing the reset button and saying, "Hey, you know what? I had this W Series uh, experience. Now I got to get back to where I needed to go." Because really, the F sixteen hundred is really more the the typical and, and wise transition out of F two F twelve hundred, anyways. Yeah, my racing ladder that I took is completely different to what everyone else would have done. You'd think, you know, F1200 to Formula Ford to F3, but yeah. I really jumped around. Um, but yeah, it was completely hitting the reset button for me. And my goal was actually to race in the um, in the Canadian Grand Prix support race at Montreal. But unfortunately, um, last year and also this year, it yeah. got cancelled. So it was a real shame that I didn't get to do that. But I ended up making the decision to do the full Toyo Tires F1600 series in Ontario instead. And uh, that worked out pretty well, finishing runner up in the championship. And uh, yeah, great fun to drive those cars. So yeah, learned learned a lot from it. Really, it helped to boost my driving in a way that, you know, driving an F3 car straight from an F1200 didn't quite teach me. Yeah, that that would have been the more ideal connection, right? And obviously what you're doing now, everything potentially hopefully setting you up to get a chance to go back to the W Series in 2022. Let's talk more about running with the Toyota Tires F1600 Championship Program. You're with Brian Graham Racing, and I'm sure that uh, you look at the website, you look at the drivers who have raced for Brian over the years, right? You're talking about uh, Spencer Piggott, Joseph Newgarden, uh, Connor Daly, Cal Marcelli, all these drivers, of course, who have come through and run with Brian again, one of the legendary names in Ontario Formula Ford racing. Uh, you're in the American Made Piper. You're battling it out all season long with Matt Clark. Overall, when you when you look at it, do you feel like you, your progression throughout the season as a driver was what you'd hoped for? Absolutely, yeah. And um, battling with Mac was great as well. I think we really helped to push each other to become better drivers. Yeah. Because we'd have some we'd have some really good battles out front. And um, yeah, the the team was great as well. Like you said, all the names that have come through Brian Graham Racing, it was uh, it was pretty exciting to have uh, to have gone through there as well. And um, yeah, great great season for me. I had uh, one pole position in qualifying and a few fastest laps as well. But just couldn't quite get that race win. You know, Mac always had the better of me, just That's especially it. in the first uh, first weekend of the year. We had some really good battles, but he just always seemed to get me on that uh, that <laughs> draft down to to turn eight. So That's it. yeah, but it was great fun, great racing, and yeah, nothing but positives to say about the uh, the Toyo Tires series. It really taught me a lot. And I really like what you're doing. Every every step you're taking is, I'm a huge Formula Ford fan. I believe F1600 is such a fantastic training tool. And you did exactly the right thing. So you run in Ontario. And then, like many drivers do, you end up going over to run the Formula Ford Festival and Walter Hayes Trophy. What was that experience like? That was um, definitely an eye-opener. I sort of went in thinking, oh, you know, the, the competition that me and Mac had in Canada was great, but let's see what I can do against some of these kids in Europe. And uh, not all of them are kids, to be honest. Some of them That's are really it. experienced veterans. Um, and, yeah, the, the quality of racing there, you know, was, was in uh, the Toyo Tires series, it just seemed to be me and Mac always battling. Mm -hmm. Now it was six or seven of us battling for whatever position it, it may it. be, whether it was people at the front it, or people in the mid pack or people in the back. Everyone seemed to have someone to race with. So a really fantastic experience and something I learned a huge amount from. So was, what, was the plan already to come to England to race the, the national championship program in 2021? Or was the was going to the festival and the Walter Hayes Trophy, was that the kind of thing that kind of set the hook and said, yeah, I definitely got to go do that? 
that's what it was. Yeah, once I <laughs> once I did the festival and especially the Walter Hayes as well. That that one actually went a bit better for me throughout the weekend, and um and I thought, yeah, I want to have a go against these guys and see what I can do in a full championship. And so it ended up being that I I was once again hoping to do the Canadian Grand Prix support race in the Formula yeah. 1600 in Canada, but that didn't happen. So I thought, oh, well, I'll come and do the full season in uh, in Formula Ford over here with Kevin Mills. So you're over there now. Let's and let's kind of delve into that. So you live in, in the UK right now. You're running in the in the uh, Formula Ford program. You're, you're you're going to school. Fill me in a little bit what it's like for Megan to be able to to be living over there right now. Where do you live? Where do you go to school? And and kind of what's the overall focus? So I'm um, I'm living in Banbury at the moment with uh, with my grandparents and uh, yeah I've been over here for university now for two years um, doing aeronautical engineering and um, yeah so between the studies and the racing it's really keeping me busy um, and overall the two link up really well so I'm I'm looking to make it to Formula One maybe not as a driver you know might run out of budget or talent um but as an as an engineer someday um i'd like to to make it to f1 it's always been my dream to make it there one way or another so it's studying so over so, here it, i say it's so funny you say that because that's kind of the same thing that matt clark i when i interviewed mac on one of our bookets before and he said he wants to be a race car driver but if he ends up being an IndyCar engineer or a Formula One engineer, that would be fine with him as well. That's really interesting. You both kind of have that same feeling considering the fact that you guys raced so hard uh, against each other back in 2020. Must be something about the Toyo Tires series. I don't know. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> that's what it is. <clears throat> so you're over there now and you're, you obviously have more racing to go throughout the season. You're looking to try to get that first podium uh, again to, to win it in this program. The Avon tires program is so tough because as you mentioned, it's not all just young racers coming up. There are some veterans that have been around a long time. You're racing against a guy like Joey Foster, who was racing F2000 here in the U S back in, I think 2003, this guy's been doing this kind of level racing uh, for 20 years. And plus, like you said, these guys, focus on formula forward so much that this is exactly what they do and they, they, they're just the level of competition is so high you finish the season this year what's the plan for 2022 is it is it potentially british f3 do you to kind of hope you get an opp another opportunity at the w series i have to feel like you think you have unfinished business there i definitely feel like i have unfinished business <laughs> i'd i'd love to go back in there and um and show them what i can really do now that i'm now that i'm fully fit and uh with a lot more experience under yeah. my belt in something like Formula Ford, I really think I could uh, I could go and show them show them what I can do. Um, that or something like British F3. My goal would be to race in Formula Three again, and uh, however I can get there, I'd I'd really love to be able to do that. You mentioned that uh, before doing the evaluation day that the with the, the the W Series, you were with Hill Speed and, and did some testing. You've done more testing this year. Tell me a little bit how much different that initial test was to where you are right now. You know, it's a, I think you, you tested, out, I'm not sure where you tested first, then I believe at Ainsley at one point. Now that you've been in the car a couple of times in that full season of, of the W Series, I have to think that getting back behind the wheel of the F3 car is such a different experience now that you have more time in a car like that. Yeah, I actually tested um, at Angle C in the British F3 prior to the W Series, and I tested at Angle C in the British F3 again. Okay um just before racing there in the formula ford and i improved by over a second it was uh really night and day and i felt so much more comfortable and confident as a driver and um yeah i think that overall even not looking at just f3 but my driving from a couple of years ago to how it is now it really is a huge difference that's it isn't it yeah it's I've seen this in all my time within the road DND. We see drivers come in in USF 2000 and they are so radically different by the end of the season, you know, and they come in so young and then they realize, wow, then it's the same thing all the way up the ranks. And he, you look at a driver like Kyle Kirkwood or someone and what he was like, or David Malukas were like when they were in, uh, in USF 2000. Now what they're able to do in Indy lights, the development is such, it's so rapid. The learning curve is so steep. So potentially British F3 for next year, hopefully a W series program, but you got to finish the season still in British Formula Four. What's your next race coming up and where are you going to be? Next race is in a week's time or just over a week's time at Brands Hatch. Um, really looking forking forward to that one coming off of a good result from Angle C. So let's yeah. see what I can do there. 
Do you have a lot of experience at Brands Hatch? I know they had the you were there for the festival last year, but have you done uh, any of the club racing? Or have you guys been there already this year? I have only been there for the festival and for the um, W Series race a couple of years ago, but that really? was on okay. the GP circuit. So, okay, interesting. Yeah, don't have too much experience at Brands Hatch, but you know, I'll try and use what I've got at the moment to uh, to play off of a bit and try and keep improving. Well, I'm sure that uh, all the Canadian road racing fans, our, our big Megan Gilks fans, will be watching you uh, throughout the year. I, I love the fact that you can actually watch the races live as well, which is great. I've, I've had a chance when I'm not racing at, at a road indie weekend to kind of watch some of them. I try to get to watch them all on Monday and Tuesday when we get back. Uh, so you've got Brand Tatch coming up next. If people are going to follow you there as well, obviously I'll, I'll post a link to the, the show underneath here uh, where they can go watch the live broadcast. Well, how do they follow you on social media? Where are you on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram? And do you have a website? Yeah, so I'm on um, Facebook and on Instagram. My tag is um, Megan underscore G underscore 49. Um, yeah, and I'm also on Facebook as well. So yeah, add me as a friend and uh, yeah, keep keep following my racing career because I, I hope to keep uh, keep progressing. No doubt about it, Megan. It's been fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Rob. All right, we'll drop Megan out here. I'll talk to her a little bit after here. Uh, what a great story, right? It's interesting that the W Series was, was grabbing drivers uh, from all around the world. And it's interesting for Megan coming in with maybe not quite the experience that would have been ideal for her to set her up for success there. Coming out of the Formula V program, you know, a, a car with less than 70 horsepower and, and the treaded tires uh, in, in Canada. But she was able to get in there and learn all the time. And that reverse grid victory holding off Alice Powell, who just won a race as well at Silverstone as one of the lead drivers in the W Series this year. I think it shows the natural talent that she had. Now she's been able to press the reset button and get the experience that would have been so crucial for her moving into the W Series when she had that initial opportunity. She did Ontario Formula Ford last year, ran super well. And of course, then this year, I'm impressed with what she's doing with Kevin Mills Racing in the Avon Tires Formula Ford National Championship. This is a young Canadian racer to watch. And I think everybody obviously loves the feel-good stories of young ladies in the sport. Through everything I've done in karting, I've had a chance to watch some great young women come up through the sport, and young Canadian as well. Uh, Juliana Chiavide, I remember her back in the late 90s and early 2000s. But we're seeing some tremendous drivers, a lot of great young girls coming in in our mini and micro categories in karting, you know, 7, 8, 9, 10 years of age. And there's drivers like Hannah Greenmeyer as well, who are at the very top level uh, of national karting in the U.S., who I think deserve an opportunity. But for Megan to be where she is right now, you can see, I think, how rounded she is. An unbelievably well-spoken uh, young lady in school for aeronautical engineering, a dream of potentially becoming an F1 engineer, something in the motorsports world, but she has the talent and the drive there to still do it behind the wheel. So hopefully she'll get another opportunity. She's showing extremely well, as we said, in the British Formula Ford, testing that uh, British F3 car with hill speed, lining her up to potentially get that second opportunity at the W Series, which I think would be fantastic to see. Love to see a Canadian in that program again, especially more prepared than she was back in 2019. Do appreciate Megan joining us here on the show. And if you're not following her, make sure you go do it. A great young Canadian driver, follow her on all the social media channels. And uh, again, I'll put the link below uh, to where you can watch all the British Formula Ford series and uh, live on YouTube. Thanks again so much for joining us, folks. I do appreciate it. Uh, all wrapped up here, folks. My name is Rob Howden. Thanks again for joining. Book it.